Hello everyone and welcome back to Zoo Crafting! I am Zookeeper Siri and we are here in the Safari Zone of Zoodessia Zoo and I have to say I'm quite proud of all of the things we've done and the suggestions that you guys have given for what we could build over here in the Safari section of the zoo are just oh so exciting, especially since so many of you wanted a salad bar. I have to say I was quite proud to see how many of you um, are very much looking forward to eating some delicious leaves. We even had a little bit of debate if we should have a donut stand over here. I still think a donut stand would make a really good dessert stand. If you're going to feed somebody salad like, and you're trying to run some sort of institution with guests, then I suppose you must also feed them some sort of dessert. So I still think a donut stand might be a fun idea, but a lot of people had like a really fun idea for doing maybe a treetop cafe of some type or even building like a sort of treetop overlook with our acacia trees over here. So, oh man, the idea is I'm gonna have to write so many of them down and maybe if they're all just too awesome We'll have to vote on them or I might even have to make it So I'll just like choose one at random and then we'll build it But for now we've got plenty to keep us busy Especially considering I have puppies to feed and ants in my pocket So last time I asked you guys what we should do with these ants that we managed to catch and there were so many species I'm so proud of you guys I was brushing tears of pride from my eyes being able to see how many ant species that you guys looked up and a lot of you came up with some fantastic list of species I have never heard of that do really cool things in Africa. And a few of you guys suggested the bullet ant, which is actually from South and Central America. And the bullet ant would be quite interesting because believe it or not, that's one of Chips' favorite ants to know about, which sounds kind of odd, but Chips has this thing about learning about animals that could like really sting you and hurt you. And he even has like memorized the most dangerous and painful animal stings of the world, like the top 10 list. It's, it's kind of interesting. I have no idea why he's obsessed with that other than the fact he wants to avoid those insects but bullet ant happens to be one of his favorites but I don't think the bullet ant would fit over here because we're kind of going for a bit more of an African theme in the safari zone and bullet ants are from Central America so we would probably put them into the jungle zone that we've got over there the jungle zone is kind of just like any jungle in the world and there's a lot of jungles but maybe we'll we'll make multiple jungle zones we'll just have to wait and see for once we start diving in there but when it comes to the ants that we currently have, where are they? There they are! <gasps> I agree with many of you. I think we should just stay with the good old acacia ant. We've talked a lot about that species of ant that has a mutualistic relationship with the acacia tree, living within its thorns and making little nurseries and harvesting from the acacia tree. And when I was doing some additional research on them to see like where we would build their little exhibit, I was kind of blown away. I remember doing some reading about them a long time ago when I first learned about them. And when I was thinking, oh, a lot of people are suggesting the acacia ant for these two adorable little things. Maybe we'll put the acacia ant down and we can make it a little exhibit over here. And maybe I could even put the acacia ants into my tree, Diana. My little tree that I have now adopted. I gave myself a dollar to go towards the zoo. And I adopted my own tree and her name is Diana the diagonal acacia tree and I really like her a lot And I even went around and I collected up some of the plants that grow native in the area And put them in a nice little pattern around her so people will know that she's a super special tree and don't walk on her Having a path would probably really help drive that home too, but I'll work on that but it was kind of funny because when I was thinking, oh, I'll just put the ants in Diana and we can add another sign that'll say acacia ants and have a little little display that could explain about their mutualistic um, behavior. Turns out those acacia ants, these guys are a little bit tougher than I gave them credit for. Not only do they live up in the branches and bite at any herbivores that try to eat the bushes or eat like the leaves and the twigs off of the acacia tree, but they will actually clear the ground away around the acacia tree. That blew me away. I mean, it's one thing to kind of like have a nest, kind of like a, a wasp or a bee colony up in a tree and maybe defend that area, but the acacia ants will actually come down the tree wiggle their way onto the ground and they will clear a radius around the tree which you have to wonder there's not a little brain going on in type like in these little ants heads that's logically thinking through the process of oh if I clear the area around the tree away with my thousands of sisters helping me do the work then the tree will grow better 
there can't be that kind of process in their minds. So I have to wonder how, like, is are there like evolutionary triggers that have taught them to some, like prompted them to come down and like clear away the tree? How do they know to clear away the area around the tree so the tree will grow better? And there's even evidence that if a tree is growing above their acacia tree, they will actually clear away its branches and leaves too to be able to give their acacia tree more sunlight and more room to grow. That blew me away. I would really love to know what kind of mechanisms, what kind of evolutionary traits, what kind of, of hormones and pheromones and chemical signals are going on in the acacia ant family that does that. That's complicated. And they're ants. I mean, ants, they've got a busy life as it is, gathering food, tending to their queen, taking care of the larvae, digging out nurseries and the acacia thorns. So basically, I, I the bottom line is, um, I may be a little bit obsessed with them now. <laughs> But that's zoo crafting for you, where we get really, really hyper about acacia ants of all things. So after having learned that they will clear the ground away around the acacia tree, I have decided that we will not be putting uh, ants into Diana's leaves. We are going to have to find a different spot to be able to show off these amazing ants. And I was thinking maybe we could put them like over here. Oh, where's my shears? I want to clear this away. Oh, I need more iron. More iron. I'll have to go get more iron while we swing by the house to get dog food in just a second. There we go. But I was thinking we could make it so that we could have an acacia tree and a little explanation about them right here. But maybe that's a little bit uncomfortably close to where the teleporter is. Oh, and you know what? I probably need to clear this bush away, don't I? I can't believe I've been so bold lately, just clearing bushes away left and right and like digging up soil and putting down dirt. I'm so proud of myself. We're actually getting things done. <laughs> actually getting things done in the zoo. It's amazing. All right, I'm even gonna grab there, that reinforced dirt. Maybe I'm even gonna come in here. Oh gosh, don't get distracted, Siri. Don't get, no, that bird. I was going to collect it. I don't wanna get too distracted, but I have to admit, it is kind of nice just to see a project that needs a little bit of work like this and just kind of jump down and do it. All right, there we go. And over here, there we go, there we go. Oh, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. And then that makes a path. And you know what paths do, my friends? Paths keep people from being um, very silly and wandering into the animal exhibits and also from stepping on my precious plants. Very, very important. Gotta, gotta prioritize those plants. Let's see, maybe I'll do a little bit more of this, and there. Whew, all right, got that out of my system. But yeah, I was thinking we could put the acacia tree right here, but I don't know about that. I think it's a little bit close to the teleporter, and maybe the first thing that people see when they jump over to the safari zone just needs to be like this beautiful painting that I will eventually fix so it's the right size. I still love it, Katie, I'm sorry. It's not your painting, it's something that I did with the Bibliocraft mod that I need to tweak. And um, you know, the, the, the grandeur of the safari zone. I mean, when people walk through here, they're going to see elephants, rhinoceros. They're going to be able to see, um, once we remove that swimming little cow, wild uh, like boars roaming around. They're going to be able to see the giraffes and the ostriches. There's going to be a lot of amazing animals over here, including a few that you guys have been sending me like uh, retextures for lately, which I'm really, really grateful for. Thank you, Michael. And then let's see, like there's going to be all these beautiful animals. So maybe the first thing thing that people see when they come to the safari zone does not need to be a tree that's going to be full of biting ants that they might have to be worried about getting too close to. So I was thinking maybe we would go ahead and make the ants acacia tree somewhere over here. Not this tree because this is our trivia tree and it's quite lovely and it's also very close to where we would be installing, installing? I guess putting up the tents is a better way to put it. Putting up the tents for our um, little campground that we would have over here that I still need to clear away and work on. And I don't want to have the biting ant tree next to the campground. And then the other thing is, this is also our trivia tree with its beautiful golden rods and its lovely prairie grass. And I don't want the acacia ants to clear the ground away from it either. So maybe, maybe somewhere, no, the grass. I almost forgot. I need to clear it away by hand. I need to like go through a bazillion shears doing this because we can use these grass pieces. Oh, my shears broke. We can use this grass to be able to feed my giraffes. I need more shears. I need to get so much more iron. I always need like 18 million pairs of shears on me. Oh, well, we'll work on that. 
but I was thinking we could put it right about there and then hopefully they won't fight with the termites. I don't think they will. And we can kind of put like a little fence area up around it and we might use a fence like that or we might just use like a low lying defensing fence that I can build. Maybe out of like that kind of rock material or some sort of rock material or even just like a dirt pile would be kind of cool. Like a little circle that would go around the tree and it would have a little sign and a little information sign so you could learn about acacia ants which for some reason are now one of my favorite creatures. <laughs> you never know what you're going to learn about in zoo crafting. You just don't. You might find out that you actually really think some ants are cool. And I mean, even, even though Chips and I are vegan, he does draw the line of ants in our house. I will admit that. All right. So maybe not all ants are cool, but still. All right, so enough of my rambling about ants in my pants. Um, I'm just a little bit excited about that. But I guess, you know what, while we're talking about it, I was just going to get a move on because we do need to feed Lily and Tate today. Oh, and thank you guys for your input on our professional plant pots. It may be worth it to actually try burning the stone that we made the pots out of. Yes, Tommy. Tommy. Why do I keep calling him Tommy? <laughs> you are not my cat from Warrior Cats. My goodness. But it might be worth burning the stone and trying out... <gasps> It's another ant! It's another ant! It's another ant from my little acacia ant colony! Oh, I'm so excited! Is there like a little ant, uh, ant, like, hill around here or something? Well, cool. Now I've got a third ant. There we go. So I really should probably take care of that today. But yeah, I, I may try burning it. We may even try selling the plant pots. We'll have to see. Oh, and then somebody had a really cool idea that I like about having an adopt a butterfly place once we get the butterfly house going and maybe even having some cool um, butterfly centric stuff that we could put into this area. Oh, there's a bunch of spruce saplings. Wow, I've got a lot in my pockets. What am I doing? So there's a thought for the future too, but we've we've clearly got plenty to work on as it is. Ooh, and this short tassel bamboo I can leave in here. Ah, nice. And maybe I'll put these ladders away. All right, all right. Put these ladders away in here. Look at us. We're being so diligent. There we go. And then I can put all the planty stuff and uh, yeah, I'll put all the planty stuff up here and the seeds and the shrubs and all that jazz. We don't need the geishal greens. And I don't really think I need these cucumbers at the moment. So we can add them into the composting bin. <gasps> And you all made my heart so happy to see so many of you excited to learn about composting. Oh my goodness, which sounds as ridiculous and boring, even though it's not as ants. But I used to teach kids about composting when I was a teacher. And that was one of my jobs was to stand in front of the entire collection of the whole school that would come to our area. And I would stand in front of like the four to 500 kids and I would tell them about what they could put into their composting from their lunch and what they couldn't. And whoever won the composting challenge, like we would have at the end of the school day, oh, people would get so excited figuring out what they could compost in their lunch and what couldn't be. And we'd split them into groups and the winners would get to celebrate. And oh, it was fun. You learned how to make even things like rotting food interesting. There's always science behind it after all. All right, so I'm really rambling because I'm so excited. But let's see, if we're going to get an acacia tree planted, do I have any acacia saplings? That's oak sapling, oak sapling. Am I out of acacia saplings again? All right, I got to cut down a tree. I got to cut down an acacia tree. I'm a little nervous. Let's go up the, the cliff side, actually. And I'll cut down that acacia tree. And we'll grab a sapling. And at the very least, I can like get the ant's acacia tree started. Because usually we'll grab the animals and we'll go, oh, one day we'll be able to actually get them a proper exhibit. But they just live in the safari net forever. And I want to leave that life far behind us, my friends. All right, I'm going to leave behind some of these saplings. Hopefully they'll grow. We can come back and harvest up their wood. Nice little renewable resource. And if I plant any over here, I have to be careful to keep them away from Diana the diagonal acacia tree because I don't want her to get knocked down. These guys technically are part of the acacia team that I'm supposed to be cutting down, but I've grown attached to them. That's what happens when you name your trees. <sighs> Just causes trouble every time. All right, let's come over here. I guess I don't have a pair of shears to really be able to do good work with. Mm, so I'm just gonna have to clear it out like so. And maybe a nice little circle. This should hopefully be enough room. I feel like people won't be able to see from the path that's over here though. All right, there we go. Mm, hmm, maybe I wanna clear this away too. All right, we're just gonna clear all these bushes away. I can't believe how, how eager I am to have like a big open area for the safari zone. All right, there we go. 
big open area. I might even put down some of the dirt to kind of even this spot out a little bit. Or should I push it back some? Hmm, now I think about it. People will walk down this path. I'm so glad I finally got these guys into Zutessia. I am too, biologist Cory. I actually have a lot of spots that I want to be putting at those flamingos. We'll talk about that later. But maybe I will just, yeah, maybe that'll make it so the ants and the termites in that mound won't fight too. If I give them a little bit of up down space like this. Oh, hey, look, it's Farmer Gerald. How you doing, Gerald? Uh, oh, what's this? <laughs> so many fish that Tate has given me. And I'm gonna put the switchgrass back down. Um, maybe over here. I need to stop destroying those little bushes. Not these guys, but like these guys right here are actually shrubs that don't just show up out of nowhere. And I would have to wait till I have a biologist to be able to buy more of them. Oh, what's this? Saffron bulbs, cool. All right, let's see. I think this will be a good spot. And you may ask yourself, but Siri, isn't an acacia tree full of ants possibly a boring exhibit? And I will admit it is not very high on the thrillimeter. Mm, I, 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 even I, even I, who think this is going to be awesome, can admit it may not be something everybody would be excited about. Huh, and I definitely need to clear some of this. Get down there, switchgrass, you're blocking the ants. All right, we'll put you there, put you there. So it may not be something that gets everybody super duper excited and really thrilled to pieces and really looking forward to being able to come to our zoo. But the point is, it'll be an educational exhibit that's sort of just tucked to the side there in between some of the other exhibits and whatever we're going to have over here. I don't even really know what we're going to have over here, actually. Maybe a small, small exhibit for flamingos. I was thinking we might open the flamingo exhibit over here up to the river and let the flamingos have have a lot of the river to walk, but we'll talk about that another day. So yeah, it's not going to be the most exciting thing to have the ants over here. Farmer Gerald, is your pig still... Okay, good. It is still attached. It won't be the most exciting thing, but this is just kind of like a waypoint to other spots of the safari zone. Plus, it will just encourage people to go, oh, a tree. That's interesting. Cool. Educational. Ha <laughs> ha. And then turn and boom, elephants. That's the plan. So it kind of helps to, to redirect attention to where the main stars of the show, the giraffes, elephants, rhinos, ostrich, all of those guys will be. So I'm okay with having an ant exhibit. That's the long story short of it. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna climb into my little, <laughs> climb into my little zookeeper hut and eat my, my grilled mushrooms for a second. I could really use a little bit more varied food. When we swing by to go get the dog some uh, dog treats next time, I'm gonna go ahead and grab myself some food from the house because this is kind of silly. In fact, I think I actually have, oh my goodness, <gasps> snowballs and bananas. You guys, I can have something more refreshing. All right, let's come on over. We've got snowballs, bananas. Wait a second. What's the missing ingredient? <laughs> I thought that that was going to make me a banana smoothie. I think I've forgotten something. Oh, a juicer! I need a juicer in order to make a banana smoothie. Of course! Alright, I think I carry a juicer. I do an emergency juicer to be able to have a fresh drink of fruit juice anywhere in the world. Boom! And that leftover snow from a winter on my farm or on my farm at my house has given me a delicious banana smoothie. And I don't know. You know what, guys? Maybe a donut shop wouldn't fit into the safari zone. I still think it'd be really cool. And we have all of those cool, like, named donuts back when we did a zoo kitchen last year. But I wonder if maybe a smoothie, like a fruit smoothie and salad spot would do better here. Hmm. That actually sounds very appetizing. All right. So let's go ahead. I'm going to put away the plants we've gathered, birch saplings, wheat, wheat grass, we've got some bay tree seeds, saffron bulbs, and then down here I'm going to go ahead and put away the jungle wood. Let's swap up, and we probably don't need these winter squash, so it would be much better to actually put the winter squash in, let's grab these, in the compost to be honest. Alright, then we'll put all of the other plants that we probably are going to use, and the seeds just for fun, because it is hard to get your hands on those herb seeds right now. We'll put all of those up here and come back down here and put some dirt away. Still stunned at how many of you are quite eager for us to do in just like sorting episode. I'm only giggling because it sounds so amazing that people really want to see that. But we'll probably have live streams pretty soon. Well, I say pretty soon, but when all the traveling calms down, 
I imagine doing some live streams with you guys, especially when I'm in Taiwan and I'll have a lot of downtime because I won't be able to leave the house unless Chips is home from his studies at the university. We might have some really interestingly timed live streams that we could do just sorting things in the middle of the night. All right, so can I put a, uh, I can't put a pumpkin in, interesting. But the winter squash can go in and I think that's everything I wanna put in the compost bin. Wonderful, oh, we're making some good progress. Growing an ant tree, is it up yet? It's just a baby still. So I'm gonna leave the ants here because I know that we are going to actually give them their own tree soon. And once we get the tree built and I clear the ground around it, then we'll be able to release them into the area and see how they do. There we go. They might even be able to find themselves a queen or something. All right, so what next? Well, let's put the juicer away. So I'm thinking we need to go and get more food because Lily is quite the uh, dog food connoisseur and will not eat anything fish related. So I need to go get lots more dog food. I need to get more iron so that I'll have a renewable source of tools and also so I'll be able to get more shears. Uh, and I was thinking we might want to take Carpenter Cody up on some of his uh, path building work that he may do for us. We could do this by hand after all, clearing all of this away and collecting up whatever uh, mysterious mineral Minerals, like this lovely thing. What on earth are you? Maybe I'll gather you up before we go home. Hello. How much of you? How much of you is down here? Oh, and look, there's another cool looking thing. Oh my goodness. There's so much stuff. Oh, it's so much fun. Okay, there we go. All right. Got my fill. Got my fill. It's just so easy to get very, very distracted collecting up all of the amazing minerals that grow native in our land. All right. Fill this in, fill this in, there we go. So much Amazonite ore, so much red rose ore. Oh, we could probably use those to make so many. <gasps> Imagine flower pots made out of that. That would be so cool. Okay, deep breaths, Siri, deep breaths. But I was thinking instead of doing a lot of this kind of basic path work ourselves, we'll go ahead and have Carp er, Carpenter Cody and his crew do it by hiring him to make dirt paths or maybe a nice wooden path or even make a nice elevated path that could switch back up here. So all we have to worry about is what kind of miniature exhibits we'll put in and what kind of little restaurants and shops we'll put in up there instead. The heck? Lily? Oh my gosh! I don't think I, I haven't physically jumped out of my skin that hard in so long. What right did a zombie have being literally in my eardrum? Oh my gosh! Okay, I don't know where that zombie came from because I don't see him, but I have not actually physically, personally, in real life jumped that hard in so long and people want me to try playing five nights at freddy i think not <gasps> oh diana give me strength oh my goodness that was that was a little bit much okay um yeah i think i'm gonna have cody go ahead and work on adding in those paths which means i need to go see if we have that kind of money with our dodo uh back at home our wonderful martha who does all of the accounting for the zoo and then when we come back here and pay him he'll be able to build those paths in a jiffy and we'll just have to do the work of actually trying to get the buildings in around it and i'm trying to think if there's anything else we really need to do before we can start putting a bunch of animals in here and the only thing i can really think about is that we need to start going in and making sure we remove all of the wildlife who currently are just flopping around in there and let's jump up here and over here and over here and just make sure that it's secure. Make sure that we cover up any of the quicksand or the tar paths. We remove any dangerous predators. And I'm actually thinking that we may want to clear out some of these bushes. Not all of them. I want to leave a ton of them too. But it's really occurring to me that having a clear line of sight for a lot of our guests is going to be super important to be able to feel like they can really interact and learn about the animals. Um, hmm. So we'll have to work on that. I'm going to have to figure out what to do with those deer we can gather up the sheep so yeah we'll wait for a little little ant acacia tree to grow which sounds so boring but i swear they're cool mutualistic behaviors amongst animal species and plants it's, it's fascinating guys oh and i wonder if we could build something up there hmm 
Plus, we need to feed the dog. So we've got plenty to keep us busy without me dying of heart attacks because of zombies, like, growling in my ear. I uh, just... Ugh, one of my top fears in the world. I have three things. Well, technically four, but I don't count heights because I can't help that. Three things I'm afraid of in this world, you guys. Many of you already know them. But the first one is zombies. The second one happens to be um, dinosaurs, believe it or not. I, I'm really... I'm not the hugest fan of dinosaurs, but I don't know if I would call them one of my top three fears now that I think about it. Huh. Have I outgrown that? Thanks to learning more about them through zoo crafting? <gasps> I think I have. Okay, so then two top fears, which would definitely be zombies, which I am still absolutely terrified of, no matter what fictional form they come in. And also, um, other than heights, uh, escalators. I'm really scared of escalators. I can't ride escalators. <laughs> Don't ask. It's it's just it's just silly. <laughs> but it's a true fear I have. So I think we might have to do a little bit of security checks to make sure we don't have any of the zombie issue. But enough rambling. All right. I'm going to gather up the dogs. We're going to head home. We're going to gather up some money. We're going to go get some dog food and some materials. And then we're going to start working on clearing this out so we can put in some animals. Because I am ready. I am ready to start seeing some of the big guys start roaming around our safari zone. And once we get that handled, then we will start thinking about how to set up a jeep tour here. Which actually may cost me an arm and a leg and iron. So there may Maybe a mining mission or two that needs done. But all right, guys, plenty to do in the zoo. I'm so happy with the progress we've been making. I hope you guys aren't too bored to death with the idea of learning about those amazing ant trees. But I think they're pretty cool. And I will see you guys next time. Bye bye. Guys, guys, okay, I know I already said goodbye, but I got too excited and I ended up finishing the ant tree. I am so proud of myself. It has been so long since we have gotten an exhibit done and I thought, you know what? This is just going to be a tree with a circle of dirt around it and it's going to have some ants and this is going to be really easy and it's also going to be super fun and educational about mutualistic relationships and an amazing species in Africa and the tree had grown. And wouldn't you know it, it did not take long to set this up after all. So I present to you guys the acacia ant tree. Dun, 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 dun. I'm actually so proud about this. I have managed to trap one ant up there and got one on the side and then I had another one in here. Did he manage to escape? Gosh darn. I, I managed to get my hands on the invisible blocks that we use to try to contain the animals sometimes, but it looks like too high is not enough to be able to keep an ant over there. It was enough to be able to keep an ant hanging out in the top of that tree, but I'm so excited! I need to just go ahead and gather up another ant now since one of them escaped and put some more invisible blocks across here, but this is wonderful! This, this is going to make a nice little kind of looky-loo exhibit where everyone can go, oh wow, are those ants on a tree? What are they doing there? Acacia ants? What's this and then right here sorry bush is where I am hopefully going to be able to put in like some sort of little information sign about the acacia ants that will act just like the information signs that we have over in the giraffe barn and the information signs that we happen to have inside of the Australian aviary too so whew, slowly but surely things are coming together but I just had to show you guys mixed in some of the quicksand that we harvested from over there just chiseled in some dirt da vinci in like a block of dirt which actually was a lot easier than I thought it would be and gave it a nice professional touch of the ants having cleared out the area around their tree and there we are ta-da now we have the acacia ant tree finished and you know what it doesn't look as boring as you guys thought, huh? I'm so proud. I'm so excited. This is really coming together. Okay, so next time, back on to feeding the dogs and continuing to clear out the safari zone so that we can add in even more exciting animals. And I'll see you guys then. Remember, everyone, stay curious. Bye, guys.